Today in the Grave Talks, Intense Paranormal Experiences, a conversation with Josh Morris. A crunch of footsteps in the snow on a cold Michigan winter night. Strange and audible voices that were clearly present but could not be made out and a ghostly woman floating in to tuck children at their beds night after night. These are some of the experiences that spark the interest of Josh Morris into the paranormal. Just where did the adventure into the paranormal take him? That's what we talk about today on The Grave Talks. Um, I can tell you exactly when, and it, it was when I was a very young child and really the biggest thing, like we had a, we had a cabin growing up, like a hunting cabin. And uh, it was up in about, uh, if you look, if you hold your hand up, I'm from Michigan. So uh, mm-hmm. originally, so if you hold your, your right hand up, palm up to your face, you can kind of point toward the middle of your palm. That's about where our cabin was. Okay. Uh, it was out in the middle of nowhere. It was 80 acres and we had hardly any neighbors. It was on a dirt road. Um, but we used it for hunting. This, like I said, years ago, uh, my, my grandfather, uh, used it for hunting and I would just go as a kid and hang out. And, um, in, in any case, the night times were, were just definitely quiet and we would sleep in this cabin and I'd be in my little bed and my grandparents would be off in another bed. And you would just hear people walking around in the snow. You'd hear the crunch of yeah. the footsteps outside the the windows you would hear people talking but you couldn't make out what they were saying and it it wasn't real scary for me the the cool thing is my grandparents sort of downplayed uh they they downplayed it they didn't make it scary they just were like you know they they talked about the ghosts um and they they did explain it to me but they didn't really give me exact details but they just uh, in, in a general way that most you know, grandparents explain to kids and, but they would talk about it as if it was just sort of a normal thing. Mm-hmm. Just totally accept it as, as that's what it was. Now, do you, was there any memories of, of, you know, going outside the next day? And of course you're talking about snow yes. in Michigan. So, <laughs> I mean, you go out and you take a look around and you see prints or something. Was there ever any evidence or anything to show what was causing those sounds? Never never there was never any footprints my grandfather my grandma would always make my grandfather get up at the crack of dawn and 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 she'd always make him go check Mm -hmm. you know and and like i said you could hear for miles so it's not like somebody would drive a vehicle up and especially in the snow on a dirt road uh and then you have the way you have to kind of pull back to our 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 the farmhouse it it's just you you, there's no way you could sneak up on this house yeah but he check for footprints and there would never be any footprints um and even when i went out to play the only footprints i'd see usually was from the farmhouse to the outhouse <laughs> from sure. my and, and, uh, and, and, and there's that, and there's a uh, dis- we'd never find anything like that and it, it just became a regular sort of occurrence that would happen and we'd only go up there like once or twice a year you know mm-hmm. and um, but but it, it seemed to happen quite often so that's what really started that fascination with with ghosts and there's there's a distinct sound difference for anybody who's not from the northern areas that don't know about snow i grew up in wisconsin and i lived in michigan too for a while over in the traverse city area <laughs> uh so I'm, I'm i'm familiar um you know there's a distinct sound of the that crunching snow and the sound of a human being walking through it versus you know just an animal or deer or something like that and you're going to see tracks no matter what it was that if it was animals or deer i mean especially distinctly something like deer you'd see the prince and 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 when you don't see anything but you know you heard those things that's an interesting concept and let's let's just touch on that for one second because it's kind of like you know the tree falls in the forest you know doesn't make any noise uh if these there's no prince and there's nothing that's to be seen what is making that noise is it is it something that's that's residual that's just kind of emanating some sort of sound without actually you know there's not the friction between two objects the snow and a boot 
that's causing it, but something else is is causing this. That's it's one of those things that I always wonder about when it comes to mysterious sounds that seemingly you would think could be explained. All the, the, the materials are there to make those sounds, but there's no evidence of them ever being used. Oh, absolutely. And a ghost tend, what I've noticed over the years is ghosts tend to communicate in different ways, depending on the type of, of hauntings. And uh, I tend to categorize four main types. Uh, one being the intelligent haunting uh, where spirits can actually interact. And there's sort of an intelligent communication that can happen uh, there's a residual that you that you just talked about um, where events tend to, to replay almost like a tape recorder uh, over and over and maybe are triggered by certain things in the environment, which I think we, I'll come back to that for sure. Yeah. And then, uh, poltergeist, uh, which is a uh, objects that can move and, and there's a manifestation from some of the psychokinetic energy we emit. And then, of course, the fourth thing being a um uh like a demonic uh episode which we don't like that's the worst uh so but coming back to the the residual that we talked about um i I think that yes there are certain things that replay and are captured in the energies around and you know the earth is full of energies and there's different rocks and minerals that can you know uh help that situation um, and I think they're triggered. I think they're triggered by certain things and, and probably us going up there uh, are bringing our natural energies and things like that could trigger those things. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's interesting. What what did you know about the uh, obviously we're, we're talking that the, the, your family, your grandparents, they were just cool with it. Like, yeah, it's a ghost. It is what it is. <laughs> Have some bacon. Um, the. <laughs> What what did you know about the property? What did they know about the history of the property? You know, ironically, I never got a chance to really go back uh, and look at the history. It's it's once we eventually sold the farm mm-hmm. uh, as a teenager, I really kind of shifted my f- interest. And I really, you know, as a teenager, you're not really worried so much about uh, history, and you know, you're not quite that in depth investigator, at least back then, because. You know, back when I was a teenager, we didn't have it wasn't it wasn't cool. You didn't really talk about ghost hunting. It was you just didn't talk about it. And um, but but my grandparents, I do remember them talking about uh, a lot of Indian in the area. We had a lot of roads and things that were named, um, had a lot of Indian names to things, um, a lot of motifs. So I know it was a, a heavy, heavy Indian area. So that that possibly could be a, a factor. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's what you kind of wonder about is, you know, especially when you're in a, such a remote area, it's like, why would there be the sounds of people in this this place if it's if it's if this was the first kind of thing or, uh, you know, thing that was built on that piece of land? Um, but then you got to think, well, what about further back? We even way further back, you know, who's been there? Why were they there? What was going on? And, Absolutely. you know, there's there's just so many possibilities. So you had that experience as a child of uh, this, the, the strange sounds and, and the ghostly experience, but kind of cemented it as, well, these things happen. It not so much, you know, are you crazy, but it's a fact of life. How did things progress then for you, you know, throughout the rest of childhood? Did you have any other experiences uh, or was it you know, relatively calm? Um, yeah, throughout my childhood at, at my regular, our regular home uh, in the bottom right corner of the map, uh, the, the southeast part of Michigan, mm-hmm. things were very calm um, in our, our regular house. I had maybe a few visions of possibly some ghosts, you know, things that you're not quite sure when you're a kid how to um, to to process that in yeah. your mind. Um, it really wasn't until I started becoming a teenager and that's when my curiosity as soon as i could really kind of start driving i had another friend that had a similar interest so we started going around uh to like cemeteries doing like the teenager thing and just exploring and we didn't have much equipment or anything sometimes we might take a camcorder like the old big vhs ice shoulder cameras or something (laughs) but uh but but for the most part it was all just going out and trying to experience and research things and yes the occasional ouija board i know we talk of that's like a, a bad thing but you know when you're a teenager these are things that you, you you just have fun and explore with sometimes sure 
So uh, did you have any experience? Tell me about the experiences you're talking about where you said, you know, you may have kind of seen or heard some things. And, and do you believe when you had those experiences, it's because it was that evident and these things were going on? Or do you consider yourself to be somewhat sensitive and, and able to pick up on things that others are not? Kind of a two part question. OK, um, absolutely. I, I'll just I think the best thing would be to tell you about my first major ghost experience all right uh, and 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 what i mean by that is my first ever seeing a full body apparition okay i've only seen an actual ghost a few times in my entire life and that's including up to right now um actually seeing a ghost a lot of people think maybe if you're in this industry uh if you're if you're doing a lot of investigations you probably see a lot of ghosts uh but that's not true um honestly i again i've only seen a few uh, like one full actual full body apparition and then a few partial. Uh, so I'm going to tell you about the full full body. And that was when I was 15. I, I was I was doing this thing where I was going around on the summer and staying like a week with different cousins. And so I decided I was staying with a cousin in, in Ohio around the Columbus area, a very old part uh, of town. And I was staying the night there again and, and I was laying on the couch and it was, I'm not sure the exact time, but I do know that there was light coming in from the street into the living room. I hadn't quite fallen asleep. I was having trouble sleeping. Uh, it was real late. Like I said, probably at least around midnight or so, maybe a little after. And I saw a, a woman come out of my cousin's room because I could see down the hallway and the, the spirit came out and started walking toward me. But she looked like a, a um, semi-transparent uh, a black woman with older period clothing. And she walked up to me. Literally, I can't remember if she actually walked or glided. I, I can't remember. But I was very transfixed on her. Um, and she, she walked up to me and she smiled at me looked down at me kind of cocked her head and she just raised her finger to her lips as if to just say you know shush it's okay and then it was almost like she tucked me in for bed and then turned around and went back across the living room down the hallway and then made a left into my to my cousin's room and i'm like kind of freaked out i mean kind i'm like of? yes years old yeah i'm like who is this person? But I was just kind of, again, like I said earlier, I was transfixed. I, I just didn't move. I didn't talk. I was just, in, I was just engrossed by her. Um, and, and it was, I didn't know what to do. And so the next day, my cousin, you know, I, I talked to my cousin. I said, I said, oh my God. I said, look, I've got to tell you this. And so I, I told her the story and she said, oh yeah, that's Betty. She said, I talked to her a lot. She comes out of my out of my closet and well, come to find out, we did some more research and her closet used to be stairs to an upstairs. Like it used to be the stairs that went up to like an upstairs loft area and then they converted it to an attic or whatever. And so her her, her the stairs are no longer blocked off. It's it's a closet for her. and uh, I guess come to find out um, she was murdered by an, uh, a gentleman. She was she was actually she was actually having an affair with him and he ended up murdering her to cover his tracks. So there was a true story behind this and and, and it kind of freaked me out, but that's also where the second real main thing that ever happened to me to, to truly want me to start getting into paranormal. Yeah. That would be terrifying. It almost sounds like at the beginning, uh, I'm thinking the library ghost in uh, in Ghostbusters, <laughs> where it comes over, whispers. <laughs> I was waiting for you to be like, and I went into the covers, and then I popped out and said, "Get her!" You know, <laughs> like I probably if she just like if she was she was standing there, if she ever just like turned into a skeleton, like the like oh the my scary god. Movie. Oh my God, I would have, I would have lost it. Cause that's uh, what's going that when I'm visualizing this, that's the ghost that I'm seeing with the shh. <laughs> right. And it just kind of moving along, doing its thing, you know, cause that's, wow. That So you have these, this experience. How did you process this? You know, you, you, you get out of this experience the next day, 
you're having your Wheaties. I mean, what what are you thinking? Are you thinking, was that a dream? Did did anybody else see this? Did you talk about it? How are you how are you going about that? Well, I I again when I first woke up, I was just like, oh my god, I I, I just again it because okay, so after it was done, I didn't just go right to sleep. <laughs> I, I was up for quite a while. That's how I know it wasn't a dream. It wasn't one of those where she disappeared into the my cousin's room and all of a sudden, you know, I'm like, oh, the morning happens. Uh, I was up for a while. I even sat up and I was just, it, it took a while. And then I finally got tired, went to bed, but there was a lot of excitement, a lot of questions going through my mind. I was just like, what did I see? I mean, who was that? I, I knew it was a ghost. Like I knew it was a ghost. It, she wasn't like a solid figure that I could tell, you know, that was not a ghost, but I knew she was a ghost. Yeah. But in time, I'm just like, I was trying to comprehend, like, why, why did I see this? You know? And I'm like, there's no way I was, there's no way I'm dreaming. And so when I, when I finally got to sleep and I woke up, uh, my cousin, she slept into like one o'clock in the morning, in the afternoon or whatever that day. So it was like, <laughs> I was like waiting and waiting, like, God, can I wake up? And then when she finally woke up, that's when I was just like, Hey, I got to tell you. And so then again, we spent the next, um, the rest of the week asking questions, finding out, doing some research, just because I wanted to know, I wanted some answers. Like, was this a real, and she said that she had talked to her quite often and that they would have conversations. So it really validated what I saw. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that would just be such an experience uh, to have it and others having it as well, you said, uh, and, and oh. kind of comparing notes uh, on, on something like that. So you have these experiences, you know, as a, throughout your childhood, you know, in different stages and places. Uh, how did that continue to progress for you further in, in life? I mean, right. were, you know, how did you end up translating that into to other things? Well, and, and to go back to part of your question too, real quick, yeah. is that I, I don't have a lot of sensitivities. Um, nowadays, I do feel like there's, I have more intuition and sense and uh, I can sense a lot more things over the years. Um, but I, I'm not like a, a, a full blown, like psychic or a clairvoyant or anything like that. So I just wanted to clarify that. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, through the, uh, after that, I had spent another probably three or four years of my teenage years um, again, started really kind of getting into this, the, the, like the Ouija board stuff. Um, I, I do talk a, about a few of these things in my book, um, but, but we did get into some, some more spirit communication. And then I kind of got away from some things for a little bit. Again, a, a few times in my life, I started kind of backing out. I, I felt like, Oh, maybe I'm just getting too deep. I don't want to get, in, I don't want to go down any bad paths or anything. Mm -hmm. So I had kind of gotten away from it um, for a little bit there. And then, and just, it would be like off and on things where maybe I'd have a few little minor experiences. Uh, I'd hear some noises or something might move in, in the home I was living in just little things like that, where I would, detect things. And, I, and of course I would do a lot of reading and studying some things over, over some time. And when I really wanted to get back into it full time was the early two thousands. Um, this is when I, uh, decided I had met my wife who I'm married to now, and we had been together for a while. And then all of a sudden through, through just, uh, playing some scary games on the, on, uh, the PlayStation, she started making me play some scary games. And to, to watch me jump because believe it or not, uh, you know, the, it's, it's the fake stuff that actually scares me. The real stuff doesn't scare me. Sure. So, but anyways, she had, she had, um, you know, wanted to, she, through conversation of scary games, we found out, I found out that we had a common interest and in that she had been involved in paranormal. So thus the new quest of, we started a team. Let's talk about some of the, the Ouija board experiences you had and where you kind of felt a little bit like maybe I'm going in too deep and it kind of made you pull back. What were some of those things that, that kind of put the brakes on it? Well, I think there was a few incidences where, for me, it was like leaving the, the Ouija board, um, sitting there, 
with the planchette. Um, and, and I always had purposely left it right in the middle of the board and I'd wake up the next day and the planchette would be in different positions, those type of things. And I really felt like that in combination with some of the texts I was reading at the time, mm -hmm. um, I was really reading up on some demonology. And, and when you just read about that stuff, it gets pretty intense um, because we're, we're talking about some some real heavy subjects, uh, especially demonology. Um, so when you're reading that stuff as a as a as a young man and and you're having these Ouija board incidences where the planchette's moving on you, um, and 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 you know that you're there's nobody else around. It's it's in your your own type environment. It, it can it can start getting scary. Sure. Let's talk a little bit more about, you know, I mean, just how, how scary did it get for you? Were, were you feeling like you were kind of starting to uh, communicate with something that wasn't, you know, something you wanted to communicate with? Certainly the stuff moving around by itself would be frightening in its, its own accord. But was was there anything where you're kind of getting vibes or kind of getting feelings that, you know, maybe I'm, I'm digging somewhere I shouldn't be digging? <laughs> well, and yeah and and and, and you you're doing some good investigative journalism right now because you are digging up something that okay so here's the incident that really kind of got me to stop for a little bit mm -hmm. and i had uh my friend called me up uh, in fact i think he paged me this is back when pages became a thing and he paged me and said hey uh you know i want to meet with you over at this this particular cemetery it was it was actually nearby my my home that i grew up in and it was an old catholic cemetery very old a lot of old tombstones um so it had that nice creepy vibe um so we met up and he was like listen you know he's like i did some more research i want to try this thing and what he wanted to attempt was a a, a um a, a a state of mind a trance that he wanted to do these chants and these words he had really gotten into i don't know if, i don't know what my friend was getting into as well he was off doing a lot of his own research and i think he was taking more of that witchcraft mm -hmm. uh black magic path mm -hmm. so we had sat there in um cross-legged uh, across from each other and he had uh, i guess lit some candles it wasn't it wasn't even windy out it was just just dead quiet yeah uh, and then he was chanting these words and next thing you know like literally we it felt like we left our body it was almost like we we're in this dream state and you could literally see a bunch of of dead spirits around us like simultaneously you were all you all were experiencing this at the same time yes okay and, and that's what i was going to tell you we're, we're I'll, I'll get to that part in a second okay but absolutely there's this was something that he was there, I was there, and you could see our bodies. We were literally almost like astral projection. Mm -hmm. We were outside of our bodies, and we could visually see dead spirits in this graveyard. And then, and this all happened very quickly. So it's not like we weren't in this state for very long. And all of a sudden, in the sky, and I know this is going to sound crazy to some people, but this is why, again, this is this is why I left for a while. But in the sky, I saw almost what was like a chariot that's the best way i can describe it um and there was this creature on this chariot i couldn't exactly get a good focus on it but it went across the sky and almost as if it brought the daylight with it and the the spirits looked up to the sky and then they all went back down into the earth and then we woke up so it was really weird. Um, and then I asked my friend, I'm like, so what did you see? And he described the same thing to me. And I said, yes. I, and we had confirmed each other on that. And, but it was, it, it really left an impression with me. I couldn't shake those visions out of my head. And I, I just backed away. I just like, he, I, I stopped kind of hanging out with them and, it really started that thing. And eventually, like really shortly after that is when I ended up 
just joining the military and, and <laughs> getting away. Mm-hmm. And that's really when I kind of turned away from it for a while. It just was, it was pretty terrifying. What was your friend chanting? I mean, did you ever get to have that conversation? No, I, I, I never really pressed on it. And even looking back on it, I'm, I'm sure I, I haven't talked to too many people about it. Mm-hmm. I just have I've kind of left that one alone. Yeah. But, but I've got some friends that are involved in some similar things now nowadays that I'll probably find out what and, and analyze that more. I just never really got back into look back at analyzing that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, a terrifying experience and what you were seeing and, and experiencing, you know, simultaneously that I mean, that in itself. Yeah. I mean, you could definitely say, you know, you were, you know, kind of on the precipice of kind of getting into something dark. And uh, I, I wouldn't blame you for kind of, you know, uh, not only visually being scared, but I would imagine that there was some emotional component to it as well that that had a, a certain feeling. Oh, absolutely. And when when you when you see those things, it's they really stick with you. And again, you feel like you that that feeling when you're when you feel small and that there's this much bigger uh, uh, expanse mm-hmm. it just makes you feel small and and you you just feel like you're way out of your element at that point it's like wow what what am i getting into yeah i, I just it's just crazy so again that's when i kind of had to take some time to 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 get back into and, and focus back into real life and obviously you did that. And then you said, you know, later you had met someone that uh, also had a similar interest and kind of playing the, the spooky video games also kind of sparked <laughs> that interest again. But after having something like that, I mean, that would be a traumatic experience uh, beyond, you know, you like the you have an interest there and it's, you know, you kind of enjoy that to a certain extent. You've had experiences throughout your life. What made you say? Yeah, let's dig back into this. I mean, after, especially after that experience, I think that'll be a kind of a hard one almost to kind of come back out of, no matter what yeah. stage in life to say, yeah, let me dip my toe back into that pool. But when you're trying to impress a girl. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, for sure. And, and that that's always going to be part of it, too. It's like, oh, you have a similar interest. I have a similar yeah. interest. Hey, that's just going to further my case. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, absolutely. And, um, but, but at the same time, I, I think what it was too is that that incident, I've always kind of put that, I've always rationalized that in my mind as was that an actual event? Was it a trance, like a hypnotic type thing? Did he did he kind of do hypnosis to me? You know, was this manufactured? Was there were there drugs involved somehow? Uh, again, I I've always kind of box that up and said you know that's that's sort of i never considered that real i guess i were guess there, that's my, were, were there my any, mind process was there anything involved i mean did your friend give you anything that i mean not like that you were aware of i mean or just you know were there drugs involved <laughs> right well no and and at the time um I, at the time i mean we weren't doing any drugs believe it or not we were we were that was one of the things about him is that he just he was never into to drugs so sure. that was a good thing that i could hang out with him and and we yeah. didn't have didn't have that influence on me. i did again yeah i, 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 don't, my, I don't know my, my thought would have been like did, did did one of your friends slip something in your drink as they were all you know <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right i got roofied uh, almost you know it's, right well and again i i don't know for a hundred percent so I, that's why i've always boxed that away as as not a real yeah. experience, so to speak. Well, so, but what, but has it been easier to box it away as not a real experience because it was so terrifying? I mean, is it? Is it? I mean, honestly, when you take a look at it from a different perspective, all these years later, uh, were you boxing it away as not a real experience just because it's a very difficult one to process and it's easier to say, nah, it was a dream or something, versus going, no, I think that something actually happened, just for ease of you know your mind. Well, it's hard saying. I would say that from this, from from what I've learned over the years of of investigating, and 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 it, and all the experiences I've had since investigating, versus that one, it's kind of like an anomaly. So mm-hmm. you 
uh, this is what you typically experience in general. And then there's that. Yeah. So, and that was very extreme. So, so I look at that as again, maybe not reality compared to what I normally have experienced over sure. the years, things like that. So that's why I've always kind of yeah. kept it up shelf somewhere. Oh, it's almost like there was, it's a different thing that was going on though, too, at the time. I mean, when you're out investigating, you're, you're seeking out the paranormal, you're trying to document things in that experience that you were having, you know, when you were younger, you, your friend with what they were doing and chanting and things like that, they were almost kind of trying to be part of the paranormal and part of that circle. And that's a very different perspective when you're, you know, in the circle of something or when you're you know, trying to, you know, view it from the outside in. And I investigating is, I think, a lot of that. Um, but when, when you're, you know, actively participating or your friends are actively participating in some sort of a cult type thing, um, that I think it totally changed the perspective in which would then give you, you know, a very different experience. Oh yeah, absolutely. That wraps up part one of our conversation with Josh in part two. What was Josh's goal when he started investigating the dead as an adult? What kinds of experiences has Josh had that completely confirmed to him that spirits are real? Is there any risk using communication devices in your home? Those questions and more in part two to hear it become a gravekeeper that's a supporter of our show. Sign up at patreon.com slash the grave talks or go to the grave and click become a gravekeeper. You'll get access to part two of this interview and all of our interviews, hundreds of them that you can binge away on right now. Patreon or go to the grave talks.com. Search for the grave talks at Patreon until next time for the grave talks. I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening. Thank you.